Welcome back to the Black Jersey. It's your boy Max. I'm the host of the channel. Today I've got a very special guest on the channel to join me for a bit of a Q&A and a big thanks to all my patrons who are supporting me over on Patreon and uh, keeping this channel going. So today's guest is a test cap player with three tests and I'd very much like him to introduce himself. Take it away, mate. Yeah, g'day. Uh, my name's Jermaine Ainsley. Um, yeah, from the Highlanders. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All good. So, Jermaine, um, you play prop and you played uh, three tests for the Wallabies, even though you were born in Cromwell. Um, your dad is a former All Black as well, so a bit of an interesting coincidence there. So, I'm just going to ask you to start things off. Um, when and why did you move to Australia and uh, things like that, mate? Yeah, so um, basically, I uh, went to the Tiger Boys um, for uh, three years. Uh, my family, uh, my last year at Otago Boys, they moved to Perth. Uh, basically, my little sister, mum, uh, older sister, my older brother. So, uh, yeah, once I finished up in my last year of school, I had to decide whether to um, stay in Otago, um, pursue things there, or um, head over to Perth. Um, so, family are pretty important to me. So, uh, I just knew that if... I needed that support around me to be able to make it in rugby. Um, that's what was important to me. So that's how I ended up moving um, to Perth uh, once school finished. Yeah, that's really good stuff, mate. Um, Got to have a support system when you're a professional athlete, for sure. Um, so yeah. guys who are viewing, the next question I have for Jermaine um, is just, I'm going to ask him, was heading to Aussie the catalyst for kickstarting your career? Or had you been keen to play rugby as a professional athlete before then? Yeah, I think ever since I was a wee boy, yeah, as soon as I could run and play footy, I uh, loved it. Um, and obviously my dad playing um, some footy too for ABs and Hondas and Target and all that. So I was kind of always there um, deep within. Uh, but yeah, I knew I had to have that family around me to... Um, you know, push through the things that young fellas struggle with uh, in their careers. So, um, yeah, going there, I obviously in my head, I wanted to wanted to make it. Um, that was the that was the goal. Yeah, all good, mate. All good. Um, so the first team you played for was the Western Force, and a bit of controversy uh, showed up in 2017. So. They were temporarily removed from Super Rugby and they just joined back up for 2021, I think. Um, so you went to the Rebels after the Force were, I guess, axed. I just want to ask, like, how much this impacted your career, mate? Yeah, I think I really enjoyed the Force in my time there. Um, we had a good bunch of followers. Um, you know, we had a good balance of players uh, across the board. Um, was really enjoying my time. Everyone was loving it there. Uh, we're starting to get, you know, good momentum, um, winning a few games, and yeah, yeah, kind of finding our identity as a team. Um, but then, obviously, that came in. I think it was near the end of the season, maybe. Um, yeah, yeah. But an article had come out at the start of the year, um, leading up to it, um, that would get sacked. So everyone was kind of playing the season with, you know, they're hovering over their heads whether they didn't know if we're staying or not. Um, yeah, and then obviously when we got cut, um, yeah, everyone kind of went their own way, went to their own clubs. But a lot of us went to the Rebels, which was pretty cool. Even the coaches, um, yeah. Yeah, even the coaches as well. So um, that was kind of an easy move for me to, you know, head there and um, considering it was sort of the same same personnel. Um, but yeah, I was probably gutted with, with that team splitting up because it was, we were getting momentum and I was kind of, you know, restarting again, which was, yeah, pretty, pretty tough. But as you do, you just get on with it. And yeah. I was, um, I was probably on Jermaine's side over there, guys, because um, 
even though I support the All Blacks. I quite liked facing the force. I liked the way they played. But I think um, for Jermaine, things turned out going pretty well because in 2018, mate, you debuted for the Wallabies. Um, so I just want to ask you a bit of a cool, fun question. Um, who was the first person that you told about the call-up to the national team? Yeah, so uh, that was my mum. I told my mum uh, straight away. It was pretty... Um, Pretty crazy lead up, to be honest. I was actually in camp um, before I actually played. Um, yeah. I got told to go home for a week or two to because um, I wasn't most likely not going to play, so they sent me home. Um, and then the week of the test, I got uh, called up on the Wednesday. I think the game was on a Friday, possibly. Uh, I was playing golf and they... Yeah. I said, oh, can you come over 10 hours? Um, hamstrings, um, possibly no good. So I jumped on a flight Wednesday night, um, captain's run Thursday morning, and then they gave me the okay that I was playing. So, um, and that's, yeah, when I called my mum and let her know. And she, lucky enough, got over for the game with my sister, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's real nice, mate. Um, real nice. Um, funnily enough, everyone, um, even though he was born in Cromwell, like I said, Jermaine ended up playing against the All Blacks on his test debut. So what was it like to face the All Blacks as a Kiwi and being their opponent? Yeah, it was pretty pretty crazy, like pretty surreal week leading up to it too, like how it all happened. But um, when I got out there, yeah, it was pretty awesome facing the Haka. Um, yeah, I think kind of a world whirlwind of um, emotions, I guess, growing up wanting to be an All Black and then facing the All Blacks was pretty crazy. But, um, yeah, I was just really, really pumped to play and get on and have a run. Yeah, good stuff, mate, good stuff. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to ask as well, like, um, for you guys who are watching, there might be some real, like, up-and-coming players who are pretty keen to get a cap yourselves one day. So for you guys who are real keen about that kind of stuff, really promising athletes. I'm just going to ask Jermaine, are there any particular tips that you would give someone on when they're going to play the All Blacks themselves? Yeah, I think if I had to do anything different facing the All Blacks, I probably would have um, just backed yourself a bit more, you know. Yeah. Uh, when you get out there, just just back yourself. Um, you know, every person's in there for a reason. So, yeah. Um, you know, when you get your opportunity, especially against the All Blacks, you know, make the most of it. Um, and, yeah, enjoy yourself, really. Yeah, good stuff, mate. I think um, that's something we can definitely take away. Um, so, eventually, um, so you played three tests in 2018. And so I'm just going to ask you, I'm just going to, I guess, jump a few years. I'm going to ask you when and why you decided to return to Otago and uh, play for the Highlanders. Yeah, so I'd obviously been in um, an Aussie for quite a while. Um, I have I've had a lot of injuries, uh, probably about three surgeries over there, um, two elbows and an ankle, and you know back um, back problems and things like that. So I just yeah just felt like I wanted to change up my career. Um, I knew my family were here, so that was a another reason, um, but also just to. I never really got to experience New Zealand rugby because um, I left at a young age. Yeah. Um, so I was just really keen um, to get yeah, come back and just grow as a player, I guess. Um, yeah, been over there for so long and just wanted to change it up and yeah, just keep working on my craft and um, yeah, just keep learning, I guess. Good on you, mate. That's the attitude. Um... Bit of a monkey off the back as well. So the Highlanders um, in the first six games of the 2022 season, you just come back from injury after missing 2021. Um, so you'd lost the first six games, but you finally got the win against Moana Pacifica. And um, the boys were looking pretty confident last night as well. So I just want to ask you as well, like how does it feel emotionally, um, tactically potentially even? Like how does it feel for the team now that the Ducks are broken? Yeah, I think it was awesome getting that win against Moana for sure. Um, you know, bring a lot of confidence to the boys. Um, I think, yeah, at the back of our heads, we know we've got to um, finish strong with these, these last few games. And, yeah, winning that game uh, was awesome. 
and then last night it was yeah a bit of frustration around some calls and that but um i guess you kind of got to park it because it you know otherwise you just dwell on it um so yeah i think we spoke after the after the game and you know we just got to keep keep grinding away keep trusting our plan as a team how we want to play um just focus on us um i think we've done that i think we've last night showed you know how we can how good we can be and i think it's just going to be a, a daily grind on you know just keep working on our craft as a team and individuals so uh, it's coming so yeah we've just got to trust the process really yeah yeah fair enough um obviously i can't ask you about like uh tactics stuff about the scrub and things like that because mm-hmm. i don't want to give anything away to the opponents but um <laughs> Like, was there anything that you've always um that you did to get the win against Moana? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously, we had, had used the um used the mall a fair bit. Um, mm. we probably knew they weren't that strong defending the mall. Um, so that was yeah, that was kind of a first sleeve to to use the mall. Um, for us, and you know, it paid off well. So, um. Yeah, I guess that was one of the tactics for that game. Um, but yeah, that no, good stuff. Um, Highlanders have always been known for the driving wall, and um, since yeah. Jermaine here, guys, is one of uh, probably the best performing props of the season so far. Um, it brings a pretty exciting prospect that I've talked about um, in a couple maybe previous videos. I definitely have mentioned it before. So now that World Rugby Mate has changed their eligibility laws. Um, are you keen to play your fourth test match in a black jersey? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, that's the kind of the possible goal uh, at the back of my head. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. I mean, who wouldn't? I mean, um, for that just to happen this year and, you know, how timely that is, um, that would definitely be awesome. Um, yeah, wouldn't be able to put into words what, but how good that would feel. But um, yeah, obviously I'm just focusing on on playing every week. Um, yeah, yeah. Obviously being out last year, and injuries, I'm just just um, focusing on every game, every week, just trying to get better really. Um, but yeah, ultimately that would, that would be be pretty awesome. Yeah, that would be great, mate. Um, there's definitely been a, a few father and son All Blacks in the last few years. I mean, the Blackheaders and the Clarks um, to come to mind and Pretty interesting timing with the uh, eligibility law changes there. So, um, you know, I'm wishing you all the best for that, Jermaine. Good stuff, mate. Thanks, mate. Yes. Um, so I've asked uh, Jermaine Ainsley over here 10 questions, guys. Um, obviously, you guys can now leave a comment on um, how you think he's done this season, um, your support for the Highlanders, something like that. And, of course, uh, make sure to hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a new video from me. Uh, Jermaine, mate, thanks very much for coming on to the Black Jews at a have a bit of a yarn and a QA. and uh, a Much appreciated, mate. No, awesome. Thanks for having me, man. No worries. Cheers for watching, guys.